Harry's wife, disgusted at your behaviour. Entanglement with the narcissist comes with significant, extensive and heavy costs. Harry is only really at the beginning of understanding what those costs are. At the moment, as a consequence of the grip within which he's held by her manipulations, combined with his own emotional thinking, he believes that the ostracisation that has occurred in relation to his family is a good thing, that they are trapped, not him, that they are the ones that are blinded, not him, they are the ones which are racist, they are the ones which have a problem, they are the ones that adhere to an anachronistic institution, whereas he has broken free from it all. In some extent, he has broken free from it. He's not a working royal. He has very little to do with them. But he hasn't actually achieved freedom. He might be free to a large extent from the royal family, but he walks straight into another cage. He also will recognise that his life has changed, but he doesn't fully appreciate or understand the sacrifices that he has made, nor the ones that he will find himself making in due course when disengagement visits him. He's lost money as a consequence of what he's had to spend in relation to the sense of entitlement that his wife has when it comes to financial expenditure. He's lost solid relationships with family and in-laws. He's lost the respect of many people, particularly those in the United Kingdom, who looked upon him favourably. He's also lost many friendships. Friendships are a common casualty of the narcissistic dynamic. Friends are a problem for the narcissist when they are the intimate partner primary sources friends. Those friends pose a threat mainly in two respects. First, they also seek to command the time and attention of the intimate partner primary source, which means that in effect they're taking fuel which ought to be obtained by the narcissist. They cause the intimate partner primary source to want to go and spend time with those individuals, which in effect wounds the narcissist, because the most important person in their fuel matrix, the IPPS, is no longer dealing with them, but is dealing with their friend. Secondly, they pose a threat because they potentially often see that the narcissist is a problematic individual. They rarely recognise the narcissist when they first come along, but they will see, for instance, that their behaviour is controlling, unpleasant, problematic, that they've caused a change in the friend. You don't come out as much as you once did. Is everything okay? You're rather quiet these days. You don't seem so happy. Sometimes, of course, there might be complaints issued by the IPPS to their friends about the narcissist, which further justifies the concerns of the friends. The friend often isn't an empath. They may be a normal, maybe even a narcissist themselves, but often they're normals who don't suffer the same level of addiction. And therefore, they are able to see far more clearly Witness Prince William, a normal who was able to warn his brother about the speed at which his relationship with the spider was proceeding. That other friends, likely to be normals, had expressed similar concerns. And therefore the narcissist sees friends as a threat in terms of monopolising the time of the prime victim and drawing fuel away from the narcissist the narcissist ought to receive, but also of planting ideas in the head of that primary victim that could cause problems with regard to control of that individual. Those friends that embrace the narcissist, that don't pose a threat, are heartily welcomed and become part of the narcissist's own fuel matrix as non-intimate secondary sources. But those individuals who have reservations that perhaps distance themselves somewhat from the narcissist are very much viewed as threats and will find themselves subjected to smear campaigns, which invariably always work. At the end of the day, who is the intimate partner primary source going to choose between? The person that they're in love with or a mate? The person that is giving them plenty of spicy poontang or someone who makes them laugh once in a while? They will choose the narcissist and thus the friendship is lost. And this is what has been happening with Harry, which has resulted in round condemnation of him. As the Daily Mail reports, 
The Duke of Sussex's absence from the wedding of one of his closest friends reflects the sad situation Prince Harry finds himself in when it comes to those formerly closest to him. We don't know if Jack Mann's become estranged from Harry or not, but in Harry's memoirs at the end he talks about how he was chastised, in his words, after the interview by some of his closest friends. He's done a lot of damage to those old relationships. Now, why has Harry behaved this way? He didn't do it previously. He didn't behave this way prior to the spider coming along. No, it's all as a consequence of the way that he has been treated and affected so that he deserts his friends and regards any comment by them as him being chastised, any criticism of his wife as unnecessary. The Daily Mail's royal editor, Rebecca English, says that the fallout from his former friends has been profound. From what I hear, there are a lot of people who are genuinely disgusted by what he's done since leaving the royal family. They feel very hurt by some of the revelations that he's made. As they were growing up, William and Harry created a very close-knit circle of friends around each other. There was almost a kind of omerta between them. There are people who said, We've been very loyal to him over the years, and we don't feel that loyalty's been repaid. The Duke of Sussex stood shoulder to shoulder with Jack Mann and his other closest confederates in the Band of Brothers photograph at Windsor Castle on the night of the royal wedding. Also in the snap were financier Adam Bidwell, PR guru Lord Vivian, car collector Henry Warhurst, nightclub entrepreneur Charlie Gilkes, Mann and Prince Harry's long-term mentor Mark Dyer. And after Prince Harry and Harry's wife's nuptials, it was suggested that Mann was just not one of the ushers, but was in fact his real best man rather than Prince William. So there was disappointment at the weekend among royal fans that Harry and Harry's wife were not present at Mann's own big day. Mann, 40, exchanged vows with osteopath Isabella Clark at St. Peter's Church in Stutton, Suffolk, where guests included Harry's friend Thomas van Straubensee, godfather of Princess Charlotte. Van Straubensee was accompanied by his wife Lucy, an assistant head at Charlotte and Prince George's former school, Thomas's. It is not clear how close Harry remains to Mann, whom he met at Sandhurst, where both were commissioned into the Blues and Royals. Jack is the son of Simon Mann, an SAS officer turned mercenary, who was jailed for five years for allegedly trying to overthrow the government in Equatorial Guinea in 2004. Harry's friend served with the British Army for tours of Iraq and Afghanistan. After leaving the army, he worked in Libya as a country manager for a UK security company called Aegis Defence Systems. He went on to create his own private security company in 2015 called Alma Risk. The Duke admits in his memoirs, Spare, that he fell out with some of his old pals after he attacked the royal family on television. Thus, Harry has lost relationships, particularly with Mann, who is very close to. He, at this juncture, will not necessarily be mourning the loss of the friendship because he remains caught up in the web that his wife has woven. But it is very stark. It is very clear. He didn't lose these friends before she appeared and has done afterwards. And therefore it shows very clearly the impact the narcissist has upon that primary victim and his or her friendships. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.